but in a correct sense, but under sense. Um, this truth is only true when it is in its purest form. So the Bible is only true when it is in its purest form. Let me say that one more time. The Bible is only truth when it is in its purest form. Adding to or removing from the truth makes it untrue and the breeding ground for confusion. This is part of the reason why the Jews that confronted Jesus misunderstood his actions because man-made laws were added to God's original laws. Now I'm going to show you another instance when someone added to the word when they shouldn't have added or taken away from the word. People say, and what I'm trying to get at here is to show you that people have taken away that it is possible to use the word God for beings other than God and not mean that they're equal with God. That is what is, has been taken away from us, is that understanding that the usage of the word God can be used for someone, and it does not have to necessarily mean the highest God to be feared, but it means you're higher than the rest. So we're going to see the Pharisees did not understand Jesus because they were more interested in their man-made laws and their man-made rules instead of Jesus. Uh, Mark 7, 5 through 9 says, <clears throat> Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashing hands. He answered and said unto them, well, well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. He's saying, You love your tradition, you love the man-made commandments, you love all of that stuff, but you don't care about God. You don't care about the truth. You don't care about what's real. You don't care about what's really in the Bible. You just care about following everyone else. Tradition which the Trinity is tradition, by the way. It's not in the Bible, obviously, as we have seen with the other videos concerning scholars and other that. It's not in the Bible, but it's tradition. We've all believed it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Not going to go there anymore. Um, <clears throat> balance is the key, guys. Balance is the key. <coughs> um... So with that being said, the Bible clearly shows that the title God can be used for judges, magistrates, and the servants of God without violating the commandments of God. Okay? Let me read that again. Uh, with that being said, the Bible clearly shows that the title God can be used for judges, magistrates, and the servants of God without violating the commands of God. Without violating the commands. Being okay. We can call... Judges, magistrates, and certain people, gods, and not be violating God's commandments. Okay? It's clear in the Bible. But let me show you one more, uh, before we move on to the other verses, one more interesting thing here. I believe that it is safe to say that Jesus never misunderstands the Bible. Right? Jesus never misunderstands the Bible. Jesus, if anyone knows the Bible, it's Jesus. Of all the teachers in the Bible, Jesus can be trusted most. And interestingly, Jesus has commented on the verse that I told you about, the very first one in Psalms 98. I'm sorry, 89. Here it goes. <clears throat> John chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. I want you to understand that Jesus is, this is Jesus' understanding of the verses that use the word God for humans. God has given us a chance to understand what Jesus' opinion, Jesus' commentary, Jesus' opinion 
about what this verse means. Okay? So you, of all the things that I've said so far, if you don't believe them, at least you can believe what Jesus says, right? If Jesus says that it's okay, that it is, that is the way that it's interpreted, that is the way that it's used, will you believe that I'm what I'm saying, that God can be used for humans or other beings other than God? Let's see. John chapter 10, verse 34 through 36. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? Verse 35 says, If he calls them God, gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God? I'm going to reread this. But before I reread this, I want you to understand. I'm going to explain it to you, what he's saying, and then we're going to reread it, and you're going to see that that's what he's saying. He's saying, <clears throat> is it not written in the Bible that um, that that the prophet in Psalms 90, uh, 89 says, Ye are, I call you gods, that I said ye are gods. So he's saying, you remember that verse where it says, I said ye are gods. Do you remember that verse? And then he says, if he who got the word of God, if the guy who got the word of God from God and who's writing these words down, if the guy who received the words of God called these guys gods and the Bible cannot be broken and it's talking about unrighteous judges by the way unrighteous sinners gods he's saying if the Bible calls unrighteous judges gods and, and the scripture's not wrong, and the scripture's not incorrect in calling them gods. God has placed it there. The Holy Spirit has placed it there. Why do you say of me, the guy who God has sent, the person who God has sent into the world to save them, that I'm blaspheming God because I said I am the son of God, which would, which would mean that I am God's son. And you're saying that because I say I'm God's son, you're saying I'm blaspheming, even though the Bible calls unrighteous judges gods? Is that what you're telling me? That's what Jesus is saying in these verses. Now let's read it again, and let's see if you see what I see. Jesus saying, Verse 34 says, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God? Okay, guys, this is amazing. You need to circle this in your Bible. Jesus is saying, yes, he called, the Bible calls humans, unrighteous human judges, gods, and it's not a sin. Why is it not okay to call Jesus the Son of God or anything else as long as it's in the same way okay not going to focus too much because i'm reaching an hour here and i'm sorry um <clears throat> i'm sorry um not trying to not trying to take your entire day i just want you to know that this is truth and it's not to be ignored here um, what Yeshua, Jesus, is saying is here is foundational to the understanding of one of the most important truths in the Bible. Jesus is reminding the Jews of the scripture that, that says, ye are gods. 
And then he says that the man of God who received the words of God called the other servants of God gods. Now this statement by Jesus explains his interpretation of the verse. His interpretation is that the word God can be used for people who serve Jesus. I'm sorry, serve the Father. This truth spoken by the mouth of the Son of God cannot be denied because to do so is to claim that Jesus does not understand the scripture correctly. And I do not believe that it is possible. When we read the word God and we see something that does not conform to our understanding, we must submit to the truth and not try to add to it something that it does not say. Another thing that Jesus says after acknowledging that even the word, uh, even the Bible applies the word God to the people of God, he also makes a statement that the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, it is not an error in the Bible. We cannot undo what the Bible already teaches. It is forever a testament against anyone who does not accept this truth. Because as Yeshua, Jesus says, it is unbreakable. So before someone tries to tell you that I'm saying what I'm saying is heresy, they may want to re-examine this verse. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're going faster here. Um, number four, Exodus 7, 1. And I'm going to try to rush here. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to make them short videos and then I get all crazy and it goes long. I'm sorry. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Listen to what God has said here. God is saying, Moses, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. <clears throat> the Bible is saying that Jesus, I'm sorry, that the Father is appointing a human man, God, to another human being. Okay, listen to the verse again. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Now, are we saying that God has appointed another God? Are we saying that Moses has been elevated to the height of God himself? No, 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 no. That's not what it means. When it is used for anyone other than the Father, it is in a lower sense of the word. Okay? Whatever sense that is, it is definitely a lower subservient sense. Okay? Number four. The fourth verse. Exodus 7, verse 1. We're going to read it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Let's read it again. God can appoint a man to a position that is called God, and that person is still under God's authority. Okay? That is not unprecedented. So is it possible that Jesus is being called God because he is appointed to the same kind of office that Moses is in this verse? Is it possible that what they mean by God when they speak about Jesus could be in this same sense a position that Moses was appointed by God? Sorry. <clears throat> I think it is okay and the Lord said unto Moses see I have made thee a God to Pharaoh I'm gonna read this real quick in this verse we see a truth <clears throat> that I've never heard preached before now let us remember that the word that when the word Lord is spelled in all capitals it means the actual name of God is being used here Yahweh says that he has made Moses a God what does that mean? We have seen a verse where Yahweh appointed a man as God to the king of Egypt and Aaron, his own brother, a Jew, and the future priesthood of Yahweh. Before we go any further, let us remember that the scripture cannot be broken according to the words of Jesus. And I can say that these verses existed in the Septuagint. 
they existed back when Jesus was alive. So from this verse, we can safely 